What's up guys, I'm Matt Reisinger. And I'm Jake Bruton. The build show today from my house, we're talking Blower Door 101. Let's get going. Jake, I think of you as the OG blower door expert. I've only owned a door for about three years now. This is the first door I've owned, but you've had one for almost two decades now. People have seen these on our show. Let's give these guys a 101 on blower doors. Sure. Uh, like you said, this is your door, but I have the exact same one. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all about the same, right? Yep. We have parts and pieces. We have a big old fan, which is literally just a fan. Yep. It's dumb. It has a bunch of different adjustable apertures so that we can get different flow rates through it. And apertures, you mean these things basically come off. Yep. Uh, this is a, a door that allows you to pop these different things off. And for a tighter house, uh, we're going to put them on. For a leakier house, we're going to take them off. Yep. Pretty cool. Uh, this manufacturer, RetroTech, happens to make theirs super simple. It just clicks right back in, in place. Uh, we have a fabric cloth that clicks into this aluminum adjustable frame. Yep. I've yet to blow a door a house that the frame didn't fit in. Like <laughs> if you pick a door that it's you awesome. normally would swing open and close. Yeah. Uh, and then we have a bunch of hoses that connect to a manometer. They're hollow hoses that take readings at the fan or that take readings outside. We have, in this case, we have a outdoor reference hose that's mm -hmm. like 10 feet away because we have to know the pressure outside and the pressure inside so that we can get a pressure differential because that's really what we're reading with this is, yep. is, is pressures. And then uh, a manometer, and because we're working with RetroTech, we're using their newest manometer, which is a DM32X. It's like using a cell phone. It's pretty it's, nice. It's pretty simple. It's pretty nice. It's uh, like an iPhone, really. It is, and we've punched in all the measurements and we're gonna just be able to make it do everything for us in this instance. So we're actually gonna run a test. And by the way, we're at my personal house. I built this two and a half years ago. And so we've run this test before, but we're kind of retesting to see, is the house still holding what we had before? And also we wanted to check, hey, some of the, some of the drains I put in the house, like I put an emergency drain in Jake for my washer and dryer mm -hmm. and for my dishwasher. And I just connected them right to the outside. I had a P-trap filled with mineral oil when I moved in. I wonder if they're still holding yeah. mineral oil and, and are they still tight? Is it easier to do this and put your hand on that on the outside? Or is it easier to pull a washing machine right. out or a dishwasher that's built into the cabinetry out? Yes. I think it's probably easier to put So much up. easier, yes. So why would we bother? Well, first of all, why would we bother testing for leakage in the first place? I like that. Let's talk about that. Uh, well, if you're leaking air, the air that's leaking in is uncontrolled. Mm -hmm. That air could have temperature with it that we don't want mm -hmm. down here. Humidity. There's a lot of the year that you don't live outside in yeah. Texas yeah. where I live. There's a lot of the year that I don't live outside for cold or hot. Mm -hmm. uh, it could have humidity with it. It could have temperature with it. It could have pollen with it. It could have, uh, you guys get wildfires from time to time. It could yeah. have smoke that you don't want inside the house. That's right. Uh, for you guys, there is actually a huge highway yeah. close to you. There yeah. could be brake dust that you just don't want coming into the house. That's I right. mean, I've seen the filters in your Zender unit upstairs. It's pretty nasty. They're covered in stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's uncontrolled. Yeah. I would rather have total control over the air that leaks into the house and bring it in on my terms. Yep. Temper it, condition it, filter it, all those things. Yep. There's a penalty anytime you don't have control over that environment right. and leakage is uncontrolled air in right. that sense. Uh, I like an analogy that I've heard from Steve Basic before, which is if you bought a new car and you had a window that couldn't quite close, you know, it was like an inch from closing, how upset would you be the first time you drive down the highway and it's loud while you're on the cell phone, the AC couldn't keep up because it was hot outside and you just can't get that window on the button to go all the way up. That's kind of like our houses, right? We want to build a really tight house so that we can gain control of the envelope and then we can introduce fresh air on our terms. And when we want fresh air, we will bring the fresh air in rather than fresh air in only when it's windy outside and blowing through our walls. And by the way, in Texas, the other thing that we forgot to mention is we have terrible allergies here. We have cedar pollen, we have oak pollen, we have all kinds of stuff floating in the air. My car is green this time of the year when I go out in the morning because everything's settled on my hood. So we don't want that in our houses. We want to take control and that's why we want a tight house. And this is the tool to find out how well we did as a builder in getting that. Yeah, you're judging your methods so that you can adjust for next time. Now, exactly. why would we bother retesting two and a half years later? It's a great question. Uh, 
For the same exact reason. Yeah. We, we know that we nailed it the first time. Yep. You got really close to passive house standard of air leakage. Yeah. Uh, we should talk about that too. So yeah, the, the standards, we're gonna, we're gonna crank this blower door up so that it pressurizes the house to 50 pascals of pressure. 50 pascals of pressure is an almost nothing pressure. Uh, it's enough that the manometer can take a reading on the building and it is a uniform pressure that like every test runs at. So mm -hmm. it's not something that we're doing for your house, it's something that the code requires for all houses. That's right. Uh, the code requires either five ACH 50 or three ACH 50, depending on where you live. Uh, they allow five in areas where they think heating and cooling is not as uh, important or as the big south. of an energy penalty. Zone the zone one and two. Yep. And then three and up, we're, we're three ACH 50. Yeah. Uh, and then the lesser the leakage, the, the better the building is supposed to perform from right. an energy standpoint. Yep. Uh, so passive house is 0. 0.6 because passive house is probably the most stringent energy standard on the planet. That's a nat or a, a, a global standard. Accepted code. Yeah. Accepted code. Yeah. Uh, fun fun fact: When I was in Switzerland a couple years ago, I asked a project manager on a site. I said, "Are you guys doing passive house?" And he was like, "No." And I was like, "Oh, okay." Like I thought everything you were doing here was. And he was like, "No, we have to build to." And I think he called it Evergy. And I was huh. like, oh, what is that? And he was like, it's like Passive House, but better. And all of our buildings have to be like that. And I was like, oh, how, how Swiss of you to just be like, no, we have to do better than the Germans. No, we don't <laughs> like, like the German standard. To and so, it's too loose. And so your house was very close to 0.6, it was. meaning if we pressurize the house to uh, 50 pascals of pressure, no more than six tenths of a time or six tenths of the air in the building could leak out over the course of an hour yep. uh, at that 50 pascals of pressure. So if we crank the manometer up, we'll get a, around a 0.6 number in that first test, which is what we got yeah. when we tested it the first yeah. time. So if your methods that we verified worked the first time are long-term methods, mm -hmm. that number will be very close to that. That's right. We should also note that I think both of us would agree that when we tell people like, you should be blow door testing and trying to do well. Below one ACH 50 is an amazing job. An amazing and number. Below one ACH 50 is the same number. Like 0.6 and 0.7, those are the same number. Yeah. How well did you install the door? What were the conditions right. like? Temperature difference can affect these things. And there's some tweaks you can make too to kind of fool the test a little bit. We can tape over backdraft dampers and exhaust fans and things like that that you're worried might have a small amount of leakage. And I'd like to point out, we didn't do any of that. We literally closed my doors and windows put the door on and we're yep. hitting the test. My, my ERV upstairs in the attic, my Zender is just as, as normal. So we could get leakage through my Zender system. Somebody's uh, backing up here, hoping that his number's not too bad. I'm just saying we didn't <laughs> tweak the system is all I'm saying. So yeah. let's run the test. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so on this system, if we just go to set pressure mm -hmm. and we do the 50 pascals of pressure that we're going for, we hit set, the fan, fan will kick on. on. You'll notice that the baseline or that our Pascal reading, it'll never get to exactly 50. The fan has to cycle up and down, but it'll immediately give us an ACH number as, as we get close there. to 50. Yep. There we go. So you can yeah, tell. We punched in my volume already, by the way. Yeah. So my volume on my house is 34,452. There you go. It's right yep. on there. 34,000. So there you go. We can see that you're at 0. 0. 0.65. So we're going to call that the same as what it was two and a half years ago. It's really, really close. And we didn't tape over your your ERV. I did realize last time we were here that I needed a uh, backdraft damper on my kitchen hood, and it's still in my garage waiting to be installed. <laughs> so it's still not installed. <laughs> it's still not installed. So your house is that close to qualifying yeah. for passive I'm house really levels of air leakage, yeah. which, you know, we could run a bungee cord around the fan to mm -hmm. make that thing click better. We could zip tape the yeah. door in. We could really make sure all the windows. I should, I should technically stripping. be blocking off my Zender, right? Uh, or is it, is so it the, need to be run with the Zender? Yeah, so the BPI test or the, the rating system, if the Zender runs full time, if it's 100% time cycle, you can block it off. If it's an on off system, then you don't get to block it off. Yeah, so mine runs full time. Yeah, so then you would be able to block it off for, okay. the, for the test. Cool. So otherwise, like the back draft damper would need to be on the hood, but you don't get to block the hood off. Yep. So those sorts of things. So let's also cut real quick to the footage of me checking my drains because I've got a dishwasher and a laundry drain. Let's go check those out. All right, I got Jake running the blower door. 
inside. <laughs> you can kind of see it through the window. And Tim and I are on the back of my house. This is my drain for my uh, dishwasher pan. And I filled the trap with mineral oil. So we're looking to see if that trap is still filled, if we can feel any air coming through that. Cause that'd be a pretty good leak if the trap wasn't filled with air. Feel anything, Tim? No, I think it's think it's sealed. I think it's sealed. Okay. So we've got a second one on the side of my house over here, which is my emergency drain for my washer and dryer. Make sure you don't step on any dog, dog bombs. And so on the side of the house here, it's right behind that plexiglass. Of course I have stuff in the way, right? I need a piece of plastic. Can you turn me off a piece of that plastic? I did, I did, uh, it's gonna be hard to see, but I did label it. I labeled it laundry emergency so you can see it. Oh, that's smart, Tim. Nope, look at there. No airflow. No suction at all. Good job. Yep, it's working. So Jake, I was super happy to see that the mineral uh, oil that I put in my P-traps for both my dishwasher and my laundry emergency overflow, no air coming out of there. They look great. Tim and I will look to those, they're good to go. Yeah, and the reason to use the mineral oil, it doesn't spoil like say olive oil right? that you might put in there. You get rancid. Yeah, uh, and it's gonna stop bugs and things from coming back up and in. That's a, and, it, and it won't evaporate is the big reason too, scorpions. right? scorpions, we're in Texas. I yeah, forget about scorpions, that. that's true. Yeah, great point, <laughs> pretty nasty. So you have a really well-performing house. I do. And we have a really sub simple piece of equipment that helped us verify that your methods were, were well executed and now you actually do have the bragging rights that you get to stick with that. We have long-term verification. This house has been amazing. I've absolutely loved it. Jake, you've made quite a few blower door tests. Let's put a link in the description to a couple specific, will you tell these guys a couple specific videos you've done that we should link to? Yeah, we have a really recent like blower door 101. There is an absolute, you can see everything about this. And then uh, there'll be a couple more in the description. I have a couple that are like, there's a blower door math video. Cool. There's, there's some good, we've done some retesting like this before. There's. There's some good method videos too. Good stuff. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below and go follow Jake on both Instagram and go check out his videos on thebuildshow.com. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.